Right, uh, thanks, guys, for coming. Uh, Georgia week. Get to play an opponent, Georgia, that's a very, very good football team. Has very, very good players. Uh, I know they're a little bit beat up on uh, the defensive side of the ball, but I think they've been getting some guys back. You know, the thing about them, when you when you turn on the tape, is, is the size and the speed on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, I'm, you know, we'll always say that they have good players, but they do an excellent job of coaching those players. Uh, they play great team defense. They do a great job matching coverage uh, and defense, matching patterns defensively. Uh, they know how to fit runs offensively. Uh, you know, they've been a little bit ball control until this last game when they inserted JT Daniels. Uh, I know they had a little bit of trouble running the ball the past game, but that, that defensive scheme will do it to you. I've, I've gone against it when I was at Colorado State for five years, uh, the Rocky Long defense from San Diego State. But, you know, JT showed the ability to put the ball in the air, throw the ball vertically. Uh, they got George Pickens back, who's, a, who's an outstanding receiver, uh, as a home run threat every time uh, he's on the field. I've been really impressed with number seven, Burton. Uh, the true freshman that plays in the slot, ability to get open. And like always, Georgia has a number of backs uh, that, you know, they all look very, very similar. Special teams, I think they're sound in special teams. Uh, you know, I think they've got great returners. Uh, they're one of the few teams that, you know, when you kick the ball off, they're trying to bring it out every time. Uh, and they, I think they've played – I think three different guys on kickoff return, and all of them are eager to carry it. Uh, and they've had a lot of positive plays, uh, momentum plays, and in, in, in special teams, especially kickoff return. As long as punt return, Jackson is dangerous in punt return too. So it's a big challenge uh, for us, uh, you know, playing uh, playing these guys. But like I said after the game, it's the last game of the season at home uh, for a lot of our lot for our seniors, uh, the ones that aren't going to come back. I'm not sure on the number of that, but a lot of these seniors, this will be their last game uh, at williams Bryce Stadium. So we're working extremely hard this week to get a good plan, go on the field, and, and get ready to play a, a talented football team. So I'll open it up for questions. David with the first one. How's it going, Mike? Uh, thanks for doing this today. Hope you're well. Uh, do you know – lot? Do you win the lottery every week? How come you get the first question? Is that how that works? Okay. Uh, <laughs> during players, a lot of guys got the first, you know. But uh, I, I, <laughs> I was just wondering, uh, do you know who your starting quarterback is on Saturday? And if not, when do you plan to make that decision? Uh, yeah, we know who our, our starting quarterback is going to be, but we're not going to announce it uh, to the public. Mike Gillespie. Hey, Coach, I'm wondering uh, – who does Luke Doty remind you of? Uh, maybe you know professionally, or guys that you've played with or or coached in the past. Uh, it's a it's a it's a good question. Uh, you know I, I you know the thing I had a, I had a talk with uh, Luke yesterday, and I said you know the thing I I said you want, I want you to be Luke Doty. You know I don't want you to be you know anybody else uh, other than Luke Doty. Uh, and and sometimes when you know and comparisons are going to happen. Uh, but I, I, I'll just leave that up to you guys. My, I'm stressing for him to be Luke Doty and be who he is uh, and be the best Luke Doty he can be uh, in his football skills uh, and how he, how, he, how he runs, how he throws, and his leadership skills too. Don't try to be me. Don't try to be Connor Shaw. you got to be Luke Doty because that's who's genuine. Uh, when you're genuine, that's when, that's when people will follow you. Mike Yuba. Uh, Mike, two questions. One, there uh, no no new guys in terms of opting out this week. We're, we're good. No, sir. All right, thank you. And the second question I want to ask you is: obviously, players made their own you know decisions up last week for themselves and their family. But for a guy like Hutchinson to to say those comments, I don't know if you had a chance to listen to him after the game last week. But just speaking in terms of just the leadership and just wanting to be there for those younger guys, you know, what does that mean for you right now, especially in the role that you're currently in? Uh, it, it it means a lot. Uh, you know, when you're when you're trying to get a team ready to play, and we're going through what we're going through, uh, not just losing their coach, but you know, the ability to opt out at any time uh, for guys, and really no penalty uh, of losing a year or, or losing, you know, your scholarship or losing your cost attendance. Uh, I mean, you don't lose anything, and and it's trying to teach these, you know, these kids that that are that are here that, you know. You're playing for more than yourself, and that was a great example of him standing up and saying, "It's not just about me. Uh, it's about this team. It's about showing these guys how to show up and go to work every day." And I, 
I, I've loved coaching this kid or being a part of uh, in the room coaching him. Uh, he, you know, when we've struggled at times, he's walked up, you know, came up to my office and, and we've talked and it hadn't been about, you know, what we're doing schematically or who's playing or it's what can I do to help us, you know, look to be better coach. And that's been his attitude since day one. And I think his, fl his play has reflected that. I think he's having an outstanding year uh, this year uh, and enjoying playing football. Dick Cox. Mike, it's Georgia week. You were an outstanding quarterback at Georgia, great offensive coordinator there. I know when I was in coaching, playing against my alma mater, used to get my juices flowing a little bit. I wouldn't admit it, but does this game a little bit special to you or get your juices going in a different way? Uh, you know, it's, you know, it's, I can sit here and say, Hey, it's another opponent. It's, you know, we got to get ready to play and that's all true, you know, but there is, you know, there's more excitement in the air because it's, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of history there. There's a lot of, uh, people I know on the other side of the ball, uh, not just the red Georgia, but in coach, you know, known since we were child, childhood friends, uh, and then I know when I played there and when I coached there, it was always tough to come over here and play. Now, we're not going to have 85,000 people in the stands, uh, but it was a tough place to come play uh, at, at williams Bryce uh, Stadium. So, uh, you know, we're just I, we're, we're going we're gonna to be ready. We're going to be ready to compete. Uh, I, I'll say that. I, you know, that, that head coach, we know each other well. And uh, not just football, we've always competed at everything we've, we've always done. And it's been very, very spirited c competitions. I'll say that. Colin Taylor. Mike, Bobo, uh, first of all, just do you have a favorite story of when you competed with Kirby Smart? Is there a good story that you have? <laughs> yeah, that's for us. We'll, we'll keep there's, – there's, there's, there's a lot of stories, right? You know, the main thing is, uh, you know, we've, I haven't played as much golf uh, as, as I used to play uh, before I got sick and then five kids and then coaching's kind of changed with recruiting year-round. Uh, but early in our coaching days, it was a in play in playing days. There was a lot of golf, and he was a class below me. So him, him and Dax Langley were always partners because they were the class of '94. And then uh, myself and Travis Johnson, who was a center from uh, North Carolina, were always so we we're always competing there. Uh, and we had the upper hand for a while, but we haven't won in a, won in a while. But uh, some spirit. I'm not going to get into the details of the competition, but. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of competition uh, between nine three and nine four back in the days. And I guess with JT Daniels, just how hard is it to game plan for a guy like that when you don't have much film on him in that system at Georgia? Yeah, I mean, I think we got to get ready to, to, to obviously play uh, some things or play against some of the things they did last week uh, off, offensively uh, because he's a different guy. He's a thrower. Uh, and, and, you know, and Stetson was a thrower too, but he wasn't, a, you know, and he ran around a little bit. But I think they're always going to have an element to, to want to run the ball and be physical because of who they are, uh, the size that they have, the backs that they have. Uh, I think they're probably, you know, they're going to search to have a little bit more balance. You know, I think what, what uh, I want to say Washington State, but what uh, uh, Mississippi State did against them last week, I think forced them, you know, to have to throw the ball a little bit more. I think you'll see a more balanced team. You know, that's not going to be afraid to, you know, to put it in the air and spread you out, but also get in tight end sets uh, and 12 personnel and, and run the ball. Um, you know, so I, I think that's what we all, you know, strive. I don't think they want to be totally spread and throw it every down. I, I think you're going to see balance, and you got to prepare for, for JT. He's probably more of a pocket guy. He does have good movement in the pocket to, to find a throwing lane, uh, but I don't think he's going to pull it down and run like maybe Stetson or uh, Mathis did. Ben Brunner. Uh Mike, just if you have a guy like Luke in there, what what does he kind of allow the offense to do differently, kind of scheme wise? Uh, if if Luke's your Luke's your quarterback, I, I think you know one we have to work a lot on more on little scramble rules, you know, because the quarterback, you know, if something's covered, he's gonna he's gonna break out of the pocket and either look to run or look to throw. So sometimes, you know, you don't work those as, as maybe as much as you would if you didn't have a mobile quarterback. But that's where a lot of big plays are generated sometimes when guys. Uh, a protection breaks down or things are covered is when, you know, you're scrambling and then you actually throw the ball, not scrambling to run, but scrambling to throw. You see a lot of explosive plays happen that way. So I think, you know, the broken play, uh, you know, explosives off the broken play would be, would be the main thing. Obviously quarterback run game, 
uh, is the other one. Rick Henry. Hey, Mike, a couple of questions. Some of the players have talked about the energy that Luke brought to practice. I was just wondering your reaction the first time you saw him um, make some of those plays in practice, especially as a former quarterback. Uh, I, I would say this, and I've said this about Luke Doty, uh, you know, the times I've talked to the media, he's everybody loves Luke Doty because of he is the ultimate team guy. Uh, he's gone out there and played receiver. He's played on special teams. Uh, Luke's having fun. Luke's, Luke's excited about being Carolina. It's not about Luke. It's about the team, and I think guys respect that. And, you know, I know – we're two and six, and we're going through a pandemic, and they've lost the coach. That they, but this guy's out there having fun playing football, uh, and I think that resonates with the guys. My cool. next question: It's been a tough year for all of us with the pandemic, and some of us also face personal challenges. I'm just wondering, as we approach Thanksgiving, what are you most thankful for this year? Well, I'm thankful for uh, you know to live in a country uh, you know where where we're free and able to make choices. Uh, you know, I think that's that's a blessing. Sometimes we overlook. You know, and I'm thankful that you know the people that fought for this country that were able to do that. And I'm you know I'm thankful for for family. Uh, and that's that's you know my family at home, my wife and kids uh, that support me, that love dad no matter what. You know uh, that I'm the best coach in the world, even though I know I wasn't on some Saturdays. And they're gonna hug you and tell you that. Uh, and I'm thankful for the football family here at it's at South Carolina. You know I've only been here. You know going on almost a year, but welcomed, you know, welcomed me and my family, and I'm appreciative of that. You know, it's something my wife and I talked about last night and this morning, uh, and you said it. You know, it's easy to look at, you know, things aren't going great, you're, you're losing, you're struggling. It becomes become a challenge for you as a, as a coach and a player, but we have a lot to be thankful for, uh, what we get to do and, and, go, and who we get to do it with and, and the country we live in. There's a lot of stuff that we could say that's, 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 that's negative and it's not going great, but there's a lot of positives uh, too. And that was kind of my message to the team today. I didn't get into the Thanksgiving, but but I should have since it was Thanksgiving week. But I mean, we're getting to play football, you know. And if that's not your cup of tea right now, then, you know, that's okay. You have an option to do – but we want to go battle with guys that, that, that enjoy it, go compete, and let's have fun, and let's enjoy these last two weeks. Phil Kornblut. Coming. So you're saying Thanksgiving is more than just a meal to you. Um, that's not a question. That's just kind of a statement. Um, have you and uh, Coach Tanner had a chance to talk about the head coaching job? If not, do you expect to interview with him this week or next week? Do you consider yourself a, a candidate at this point? Uh, I have not uh, talked to Coach Tanner uh, in about any of that. Uh, I've been focused on my he's, – he's, he's asked me to lead this football team uh, and get them ready to play and put their best foot forward, you know, week in and week out. And, and, I'm, and I'm saying this as honest as I can, Phil. That's all I'm focused on. John Whittle. Mike, obviously there are a lot of things to still be decided, but have any of those seniors expressed to you – uh, that that they definitely want to come back next week, or or what have those conversations been like with you guys? Uh, those, co those, those coach Muschamp has some conversations with some guys, you know, at the at the as the year, beginning of the year, and when they came out with the rule of that that guys could come back. Uh, so we've got a list of guys that have said, you know, they're going to come back. I think that'll be, you know, a conversation for the for the new head coach to have with those guys. Kyle Thomas. Coach, talk to me about some of the conversations that you're having with your quarterbacks going into this week. Uh, you know, is that we we got a, we got a job to do. We got to we got to get ready. We got to prepare. Uh, you know, day, today was day one of day one installation. Um, basically, normal downs. When I say that, I mean first or second downs and learning the plan. And you know, everybody being ready to play. Uh, you know, you've got a job to do. Uh, your job of a quarterback is to learn what we're doing so you can go out and execute it. But it's also to, to, to be a leader uh, of the football team. And, you know, you get – and being a leader of a football team is, is, is showing up, doing your work, you know, being a team guy. Uh, that's what that's – what, that's, and it's not about you. That's what being a leader is. And that's been my, my message to those guys. Colin Taylor. 
Yeah, yeah, like I guess if Luke is the starting quarterback, how comfortable do you feel with his ability to know the the entire playbook? And will there be any limits to kind of what he can do on the field? I'm not asking you to give up state secrets, but just do you feel comfortable with his knowledge? Of this game? Uh, you know, wh whichever quarterbacks in there, we're going to do things that fit that fit their skill set. David Conner. Hey, Mike, is there an update on Shy and to carry on? Could they potentially play? Some yeah, uh, Shai Smith is, uh, I would say, doubtful for this game uh, to carry on practice today. Uh, he had limited practice with the amount of periods that our training staff let him go, but I thought he looked good. So I'm, I'm expecting, uh, I would say he's, I don't, I didn't get to update today, but I, I don't want to upgrade him to probable, but I'd say he's probably questionable to probable. Uh, other uh, offensively, I think, you know, we're, Xavier Leggett still still out uh, offensively, defensively. Uh, you know, KT is is questionable. Tonka Hemingway is questionable. Jordan Birch is questionable. Uh, Twenty seven Jalen Foster is questionable. Uh, we got a lot. Of, we got a lot. Of, we got a lot of issues. Uh, I think we're down 16, 16 scholarship players defensively right now uh, from practice. But it is what it is, and you know we're going we're going. Whichever, whoever's here willing to play, we're going to coach them up. And whoever the training staff says can play, we're going to coach them up. And uh, we're going to go out there and battle our ass off. Dick Cox. I know it's Georgia week, but the big question for me this week is, are you a white meat turkey guy or dark meat turkey guy? And what's your favorite thing to eat on Thanksgiving? Love it. That's something that we used to we, – we would always – now that you mentioned that and as quarterback coach and – at Georgia, uh, at first when I first started, Mark Rick was in the room, and uh, then he gradually gave it to me. But every Thanksgiving, we'd always talk about, you know, obviously what you're thankful for, and then hey, what's your what's your meal? Uh, so I've done this, you know, I've, that tradition for 20 something years that I've been been coaching. I am a I never was a turkey guy. Uh, I was I'm a white meat turkey guy, but I never was a turkey guy really because I thought it was too dry until they started frying turkeys. Now they fry turkeys. I love I love turkey. Uh, and then my favorite, uh, my mom's squash casserole. I, I would go with I would go with that. So basically, what I do is I I'll, I'll sit there and pick at the turkey off the tray, which you're not supposed to, and I'll eat that all throughout the day. And then when it's time for to actually sit down and eat, I fill my pl plate with vegetables. Uh, so, and then I'm going to have some sweet tea. I hadn't had sweet tea in five years for Thanksgiving. Now that I'm back in the South, I'll have some sweet tea. Ben Briner. Uh, hey, Mike, uh, kind of two questions. The first one is you, you, you said you haven't really had many of the senior day uh, conversations with, with the guys just because Mike had, uh, just because uh, Will had them beforehand, correct? We're I'm talking about who's coming back as a yeah. senior. That's the yeah yeah the seniors all the seniors are going to be involved in the senior day, uh, uh, but as far as who's coming back and not deciding to come back an extra year because of the NCA I haven't had those conversations with them because they're all playing that would be for the next head coach to have that conversation or a conversation with them after the season. Okay, and um, I, I kind of wanted to ask just just how sort of what has it been like doing the the pre senior day conversations with guys who could all potentially come back? Because usually it's you know, juniors who say they want to walk because they might go to the NFL or redshirt juniors who might leave the program. And now you've got that conversation with guys who could potentially come back. Um, and, and also one foot. Uh, go ahead. Finish your question. I was say also, also one football question, which is you mentioned uh, Missouri because of their, uh, their coverage is kind of left uh, scrambling lanes. Does Georgia do similar stuff to that, or are they a little bit less on that on that side of things? Hey, uh, as far as your senior day question, you know we had a, you know that's something our operations guy, uh, coach George Wynn handles conversation with all those guys. And the, and the, the bad thing about this year, uh, senior day is a special day for all seniors. Uh, you know, because they get recognized in front of, you know, the fan base. And obviously we don't have a full fan and their parents get to come on the field. But the pandemic we're in, you know, the parents aren't going to be allowed on the field. Uh, so it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, we, we address that with them. Coach George Wynn addressed it with them. And it's not something, you know, they wanted to hear because their families are a big part of their lives. But, you know, it's what we're going through. Those are the rules. Uh, so they'll be honored. We'll take a group photo with all the seniors. <laughs> Uh, they'll take a photo together and then we'll show their family on the on the big screen. 
you know, I know it was special, you know, for me when I was a senior, and it was special for me when I was a head coach at Colorado State to not only tell, say thank you to those seniors, but also tell their parents and loved ones thank you. And that's an opportunity, you know, they won't have. So maybe that'll encourage some of them, you know, to come back and, you know, have a true senior, you know, season. Uh, it's been a difficult one. And I know some of them will and some of them won't. Uh, but we're not, you know, my message to them and everybody on the team is your time is right now, okay? It, it's, it wasn't last week. It's not in the future uh, after the season or when a new co- – I said it's right now. Enjoy right now, okay? Don't, don't, don't get focused on, you know, what's going to happen in two weeks or who, who Ray Tanner's going to hire or where you're going to – just focus, enjoy being here and being part of this family and playing with these guys right now. That's my, that's my message. Okay, I'm not getting into are you coming back, are you staying. Uh, uh, you know, my focus is on right now getting ready to play Georgia today in our practice and then coming out and having a great practice tomorrow and learning the plan. I don't, I don't get into all that uh, because they're playing for South Carolina, you know, and I'm playing for the NFL right now. They're playing for, they're playing for South Carolina. Uh, the other thing is uh, coverages. I, I expect, uh, you know, if if Luke Doty is in the game, that we would see some coverages where he, he would be accounted for, you know, whether it's a, a low hole, uh, what you call a robber, you know, would have eyes sometimes spy or drop a safety down. Uh, the thing about Georgia, they play a lot of split safety coverage uh, because they're so good up front, whether they're in their three down or four down. You know, they're able to, to play a lot of split safety and really smother you in the passing game uh, because they can hit, they can stop the run in their base defense. Uh, you know, third down is where they get really, really exotic. Uh, you know, and they, you, you, if you've seen Georgia play or, you know, what, I mean, when third down happens, I mean, it's a boatload of substitutions. They got packages for all kind of guys. They got blitzes coming from everywhere. Uh, so, you know, that's that's where you might see something different if, you know, Luke Doty was a quarterback in a third down situation because now you got to account for different plays other than drop back pass. Mike Yuba. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mike, what is uh, Thursday? We'll, we'll, how will that uh, look for you guys in terms of practice? I know Nick Muse mentioned that some of the local guys might have a chance to go back to see their families. Yeah, that, that's what we're going to do, Mike. Now, the good thing is we practice in the morning, but I've always, and I think Coach did it before, even we'd be off, we'd practice in the morning and give local guys an opportunity to go home. Uh, you know, we won't we won't have our practice, our meetings until Friday until one o'clock because it is a night game on Saturday. You know, so they'll have a good 24 hours to go home, and then we'll stress what we have. You know, every time they've had any kind of off time, is remember social distance, remember to wear your mask. You know, you could come back and you know potentially if, you know affect. You know, not only yourself, but somebody on this football team. And the kids have done a great job with that. When coach gave them time off in the open week, uh, they're coming back and knock on wood, nobody, you know, nobody tested positive. So, you know, we'll continue to educate and, and give them their pointers. Our training staff and operations has done a great job of that. But I'm, I'm, a, I, we're going to allow them to go home and hopefully, you know, some of our players that that aren't from close by, you know, will have an opportunity to go go. Go to our other players' families' houses. That's what I've what we've always done is, you know, open it up and try to get everybody a place to go for Thanksgiving. We'll have our meal Wednesday night as a team, but Thursday will be about their families. And, and Mike, I know Phil mentioned it a little bit earlier. The whole, you know, is, is, do you view Thanksgiving as a meal or a holiday? The reason why that was mentioned is because a couple of years ago, uh, Coach Muschamp actually said he just views it as a meal. So we have to ask you now, you know, is, is Thanksgiving a meal or a holiday? It, it's it's uh, it's a it's a holiday. I mean, I think it's a really, you know, I and, and I try to, you know, live your life where you're thankful every day. You know, you know, when you wake up, you ought to be thankful. You know that we live in a country and get to do what we get to do, uh, but I think when it's Thanksgiving, uh, it, it brings more attention to to make yourself sit down uh, and be grateful. Uh, and that's you know it's something I've always tried to, to stress to, to to my kids and kids that I've coached. You know we got a lot to be grateful uh, for. There's gratitude. Uh, you know, and and so we'll continue to stress that. But it is. I mean, I, I'm basically Thanksgiving every day. The much weight as I've put on since I've been here. So I might skip the meal uh, and and just just be thankful to be able to be at home with my family Thursday afternoon. Kyle Thomas. Coach, going off of what you just said about players opening up their homes to the players who aren't from around this area, earlier in the press conference, Nick Muse actually said that any player who's not from here is welcome to come to his house and enjoy a meal. 
what does that just say about the culture and mentality of the program and the brotherhood that players have created so far? It's 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 your it's your family away from away from your family, and these guys spend a lot of time together. Uh, I mean, you got you got kids from all walks of life, different races, different religions, uh, but you know we're 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 one one family, one team here, and and. Guys will guys will take care of each other, and I, you know I think this is a great week. You know it's really been a great year uh, to to even focus more on that. And then the last last week and a half, uh, you know I think we've drawn us even closer. These players even closer, you know, because sometimes they realize it is you know this is all we got is us. You know sometimes things happen beyond our control, but you know your loved ones. You know sometimes we take those for granted. Uh, your loved ones, and I think you know, these teammates, are they love each other. Dick Hex. Regardless of the records, and even back when you were playing and coaching there, though, it seems like the South Carolina-Georgia game is always a close game. Why do you think that that's, that happens? Well, I think you got a lot of players. Uh, you know, South Carolina's always recruited as a state of Georgia uh, heavily, and they've always had back, you know, from – when I was playing, you know, guys on that team that were from Georgia when I was coaching, uh, and a lot of these kids, they know each other. And so it's very, very competitive. Uh, it's like, you know, when you're competing against your, you know, your guys you've competed against your whole life and you know them, you want to you wanna succeed even more. So I think that's one of the reasons. Seeing no more hands, I guess that's a wrap. If you think of another question, call in tonight on the call-in show, 7 o'clock over at uh, Backstreet's Grill. Coach Bo will be there and happy to answer your question tonight. Thanks, guys. Always, uh, everybody have a happy Thanksgiving.